Now the forty sixth the forty sixth sabbatical or rit or Torah scroll reading is from Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter chapter seven. Let's bring that up here from our our re readings chart sample since we have about from John Hoy's Earth Strong, the Son of Man from the Son of Man Day, from the birthday of Lij Teferi, or what's commonly known as the birthday of Hala Selassie. With the occurrence of that being on July 23rd, the heliacal rising of Osiris, the Nile inundation, the flood waters of the Nile, which all connects with that sign of Geta Chini Jesus Christos, the sign of the Jesus Christos, or the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, which is a heavenly sign or astro theological sign and we have to connect with that the Orit Zefitrat or Genesis Barashit one and fourteen where it speaks of signs, seasons, days and years, the signs in the heavens, and compare that with Matthew twenty four, chapter twenty four, verses twenty seven to thirty one, and namely pay close attention to verse thirty. Verse thirty is a very important verse to recognize what's the sign of Lich Teferi or the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and compare that with Revelation chapter 12 verses 5 to 6. So all this now links with the heliacal rise or the rise of Cyrus or what's commonly called the dog star, the polar star, et al., so forth and so on. Now it's very important to understand that link there with the birthday of Haile Selassie, what's commonly called the birthday of Kedemawi Haile Selassie, which is the birthday of the Son of Man, or the sign that accompanied the birth of Lich Teferi. It's very important for us to understand that link with that day, and how that day is linked with the Nile waters, the head of creation, what's known in, and what was known in ancient Egypt as the head of creation, with the inundation of the Nile waters. And it gets very interesting when we get into the hieroglyphs and when we get into the Ethiopic and the proper interpretation, transliteration of the Ethiopic words and the comparison with the ancient Kemite or the ancient Egyptian words, the link there, because remember the Israelites, the Beit Israel and Musa was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts, of the upper and the lower Egypts, or the so-called Kemite and the Kushite Egypts. So it's very in important for us to understand how Yahweh and the, pr and the worship of the true God, Yahweh, was preserved during that time by our Coptic Hebraic brother, Musa. So that sign that the Bible speaks of, the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, links with July 23rd. And July 23rd links with the heliacal, the heliacal rise or the rise rising of Cyrus or the dog star and that links with the flood waters and we know the flood waters come from the headwaters of the Acre or the highlands of Ethiopia Ethiopia and we know that Psalm 6831 says that Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to God but before that verse the B part of the verse the A part says that princes shall come out of Egypt so when we link all the prophetical signs there, we come to Rastafari or Rastafari revelation. So now what we want to address is getting our house in order. Let all things be done decently and in order, as well as to redeem the time and to understand how the Antichrist, the Hasaway Mashihoch, or the anti-Christians, Antichrist, Satan, and the men and people under the influence of Lucifer and Satanism have sought to change laws and time. So have us on an artificial Greenwich or Greenwich time coming out of England. The whole world is on this artificial time. So we have to get into a proper time, you understand, in order to come out of Babylon and recognize what the true signs are. We can't see the true signs in this Gentile misinterpretation. We have to go back to the root. So this is why the Orit or the Torah scroll, the sabbatical readings, and there are 54 of them for the entire year according to the ancient Hebraic or Judeo 
calendar, the lunar calendar coupled with the solar calendar now brings both the father and the mother, the father and the mother, the, the lunar and the solar. It brings us once again into the proper alignment again. And this is where we also see within the book of Revelation that sign of the woman. You understand who is garbed in the sun and the moon is at her what? The moon is at her feet. So the moon is the foundation of that woman. Thus Ethiopia's Judeo-Christian heritage and our Hebraic and Messianic heritage and our lunar and solar calendar as one once again restored in and through the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, or that astral theological sign of Lij Tefari, which you know as Aras Tefari, and the world knows as Kedamawi Haila Selassie. So let's get into the 46th, the 46th of the 54 Sabbatical or Read or Torah Scroll readings, often called the Parashot, the Parashot readings. The 46th one is called Ekeb. Ekeb, or some say Ekev, the Ashkenazi say Ekev. But the readings from the Orit or Torah are Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 12, to Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 25. The Haftarah reading is Isaiah chapter 49, verse 14, to Isaiah chapter 51, verse 3. And then we have the Adis Kidan or the Burt Hadash or Hadasha reading from the New Testament, New Covenant, from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 to verse 13, and Romans chapter 8, verse 31 to verse 39. So these are the readings for the 46th week, and the 46th week actually began on the past. Senbet or Sabbath or Shabbat, which it was July 23rd, and the birthday of the King of Kings or the birthday of Lij Teferi, the Son of Man. So now we get to now see through this prophetical time and space that we're in how it all begins to align. We can see this alignment, and this is very important as we are approaching this prophetic time, this prophetic time, especially with the talk and speculation and the actualization of the prophetic signs of 2012. So it's very important for us to get our house in order, and we hope to be able to go through these readings and teachings from the Torah, the Haft Torah, and the Bert Chadasha in a timely fashion. So in order to catch up, we need to go through Ekeb, or Ekeb, which is the 46th of the 54 readings for throughout the particular year. And the superiority of our reading chart and the chart sample that we're going to make currently available is that it not only includes the, the Torah and the Nabim along with the Ketabim or the prophet prophetical writings and the other writings of like Kings, the Book of Kings and Ruth and other areas of scripture, but the superiority of this is that it's messianic. Therefore it's truly Christian or Christian because it also includes the new covenant. So from a Hebrew or Israelite or early Christianity, the early days of Christianity, the Nazarene and, and like the Paul, Apostle Paul and the other apostles, it is in conformity with their foundation or the, the true foundation of Christ and his disciples, but mainly Christ and the apostles. Because this is where the real Nazarene or the Christian movement really begins and the real foundations. The problem with Western Christianity is that Western Christianity has taken out the foundations, has removed the foundations, and some even claim that it never had the foundations, namely Torah, which is Old Testament, which is the five books of Moses, and the prophets. 
and usually when they refer to it, it's just usually limited sound bites, a couple of verses which they say means that we're into Christianity, but not the true Christianity or Judeo Christianity of Christ and his first century or early century apostles, which is early Christianity, getting back to the root, the truth, the Ritz Etaimanot or Tawahedo foundation that was preserved in Ethiopia, in the highlands of Ethiopia. So it's very important for us to go through this and just from some of the studies, some really amazing, amazing simplicity of Christ and it brings everything into, in, into a perspective, a very good perspective. And those who study with us will find that out for themselves.